Okay, good morning. Good morning. Yes. Uh, can you take the um, portion which I asked you to learn? Page seventy nine, eighty, and half of eighty one. Okay, I want you all to make um, eight questions from this portion. Whichever type one mark or uh, short answer type anything. Make eight questions, and you should know the answer also. Okay, so make eight questions right now. For those who are absent yesterday, the portion is from depressive disorders to uh, bipolar related disorders. Diana, you came late? Yes, sir. Yes, you have to make eight questions. You have to prepare eight questions from the portion that I asked you to learn yesterday. It is uh, bipolar related and depressive disorders. No need to write the answers, but just make the question and uh, make sure you know the answer. That's it. Amal, can you hear me? Uh, please take the portion that I asked you to learn and prepare eight questions from that, from depressive and bipolar related disorders. Just make eight questions and write it down. Ma'am, up to bipolar, right? Uh, up to bipolar, including bipolar, depressive and bipolar related. Schiz till uh, the line where you have schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is not included, just before that.
When you're complete, please let me know. Ma'am, how many questions? Eight, eight. Eight. Finished? It's just a matter of eight questions. What is taking you so long? I thought writing answers were difficult. Elvina completed? No, ma'am, one more step. One more minute, and then you have to complete. Meitna, where did your spectacles vanish? I don't need it anymore. Very good. Done? Amal, finished? Right first. Ashish, completed? No, right, right first. Okay, Sneha, you can choose one person and ask one question that you select from the eight questions. Elvina, list the three examples of bipolar related disorder. Bipolar. Bipolar 1 disorder, bipolar 2 disorder, and psychothermic disorder. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Elvina, you can ask someone else. Meghna.
what is the earlier name of bipolar one disorder can you repeat the question what is the earlier name for bipolar one disorder maniac depressive disorder yes ma'am maniac depressive or manic manic okay then uh, megna your chance virishma that is i should get today hmm any four ways to strengthen a student's self esteem any four ways to strengthen a student's self esteem uh, actually taking positive feelings is to help them in positive identity okay um finding opportunities to develop uh, their social physical and emotional skills mm -hmm. establish good communication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh making sure the goal, the goals are measurable achievable relevant and specific okay it's enough enough right yes ma'am yes the goal should be achievable by the student okay then wish my your chance Uh, I should be. I should be absent. Meg. What are the factors that result in suicide? Factors resulting in suicide. Uh, natural disasters, loss of uh, loss and depression. Um. experiencing violence correct ma'am i heard it uh, after the excessive suicide is also a complex indicator of biological psychological sociological cultural and environmental factors Mm -hmm. they that there are risk factors mm -hmm. there are risk factors of suicide or the disorder which one where where are you talking about which place in the text there is ap bipolar disorders mm -hmm. in the third paragraph it says suicide is a result of biological genetic factors mm -hmm. they, they can be considered as risk factors that put the person at risk for uh, that is the that increases the vulner vulnerabilities of the person towards suicide uh, attempting suicide okay yes, paragraph is that risk factors of suicide or risk factors of the disorder uh generally it's of the suicide actually okay and these uh, bipolar and related disorders they have a high chance of attempting suicide that is why that's given there okay so uh, when we uh, consider from a broader perspective it is a part of disorder but again uh, it is specific to the suicides also in general got it okay then meg raina raina some of the some behaviors that can be noticed by the teachers in a student with suicidal tendencies this decreasing efforts this is right yes declining of grades misbehavior in the classroom lack of interest in common activities 
this. Okay, these uh, factors help to identify the students who are in distress, who are facing a lot of stress. Okay, negative stress. Then that might lead to suicide. Uh, then right now. Hmm? I should ask. You should ask. The measures taken by WHO to avoid suicide. Hmm. Question is two. Sana. Care for people who attempted to, like, who attempted for suicide, then uh, limits limit access uh, to the means of suicide. Mm. Uh, then, um, and then training health, health workers. Mm. Is that correct, Raina? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that enough? Satisfactory? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sana, next. Please switch on your videos. Grishma, Ashish, and Aishwarya. Okay, next one. Sana. First, and then we have to discuss behavior therapy also. The factors predispose. Uh, predisposing towards depression. Question is to Ashish. Ashish. Ashish, switch on your video. Hmm. Can you repeat the question? The factors predisposing towards depression. Just think, what would be the factors that put a person at risk for uh, having depression? You know it, man. Louder, louder. Can you remove the headset and speak? I cannot hear anything. Huh? Then type type in the chat box. Okay, Aishwarya, you can ask one question uh, from the portion that we learned to somebody else in the class. Mm, what are the, uh, what are bipolar disorders? To whom? Uh, Sneha. Bipolar disorder, uh, it can be mania and uh, depression. Mania and depression, mania alternate, no, they alternately take place. Mania, which uh, rarely take, uh, which rarely uh, comes to themselves. Then um, uh, and it get and normal moods also interact. Then bipolar disorder is also known as uh, manic depressive disorder. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Amal, ask one question to Aishwarya. I think she didn't get a chance. Others, the stuff you got, right? Hmm? 
Did you send Ashish? Ah, even I was searching for that. <laughs> the chat box is missing. <laughs> it's your lucky day today. Uh, whatever. Let it be. I'm going to ask one question first and then we'll finish it off. Uh, what does in terms of major depressive disorder? Symptoms of major depressive disorder. Genetic factors affect. Then age of the person also affect. Like women are more prone before the adulthood and uh, men are prone during their middle ages. Then the gender also matters. Is that correct? What did you ask? What was the question? Uh, symptoms of major depressive disorder. These are not the symptoms, right? These are the predisposing factors. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, 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 what are the symptoms, Aishwarya? Do you know? The people may always feel low or down. Low mood. They won't feel an interest in things which they felt interest before. Mm -hmm. Switch on the videos, everyone. Then. Frequent crying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then what then about appetite? Low appetite. Mm -hmm. Low appetite for some people will be a higher appetite, higher level of appetite. And sleep also. Some people will have uh, increased sleep. Some people will have decreased sleep, lack of sleep. Okay. Okay, Ashish, hopefully we'll uh, give you a chance in the next class, okay? So obviously the next portion would be schizophrenia. Amal did not get a chance, no? Somebody, uh, Elvina, ask one question to Amal. Fast, fast. So next portion will be schizophrenia, just schizophrenia alone. Okay. That Barty. is page number 82. Okay, continue. What is major depressive disorder? That is what he asked now. Something else? Uh, why do people attend suicides? Amal, just tell me from your knowledge, why do people attempt suicide? And due to alcoholic... Uh, and, um, Generally, why do people attempt suicide? It's because like, uh, they're too much happy. And uh, suicide... They did not get uh, support from uh, society. Oh. Lack of sub social support, then? The, or maybe I just depressed. Hmm? I'm highly depressed. Or uh, stress. Hmm. Stress, then. depression. That's all. Okay. Read more, everybody, please. Next portion is schizophrenia. We have so many concepts in that. Please learn to define each one, okay? Delusion, hallucinations, auditory hallucination, visual hallucinations, then delusion of reference, delusion of persecution, everything. That's why I'm not adding any more disorders. Just learn that and come for the next class. Okay? Fine. So take behavior therapy. What is the general assumption of behavior therapy? What causes disorders? What causes psychological problems? Hmm. The wrong learning of behaviors. Faulty learning of behaviors. 
then faulty thinking patterns that you have already learned from the past then which which uh, set of principles do we apply in this particular therapy in psychodynamic we had <clears throat> fluids concepts right as the theoretical background so in behavior therapy which one would we have which set of principles would we have elvina ma'am can you repeat the question which set of principles would we have behind these behavior therapies it is based on a set of th theories that we apply it into real life isn't it we uh, uh, apply it in therapy in psychodynamic we had through its concepts id ego super ego structure of mind uh, then uh, the ego defense mechanisms then the fixations everything we had that in theory so in behavior therapy what would that be reinforcement hmm. all that comes under which set of principles behavioral behavioral perspective or one whole chapter was devoted to that anyone learning principles learning principles okay don't forget that term when you hear behavior therapy behaviorism uh, the things included in that or the theoretical principles included in that or the theories behind that it is the learning principles and which all theories did we study in that amal tell me any one learning principle learning theories so many experiments with <clears throat> pigeons cats rats everything give me any one name Ivan Pavlov's concept, B. F. Skinner's concept. What was it? Give me any one name, dear. <clears> hmm <throat> hmm hmm. Hmm. Did you get? No, I don't have a name. I guess the experiment. Which was the experiment? Uh, I get a uh, rat running in a maze, uh, like latent learning. Ah, uh, latent learning. <clears throat> That is correct. Latent learning by. Remember the person. I'm tall man. Tall man, correct. Okay. Any other principle, uh, Raina? Any other learning principle? No. Anxiety. I cannot hear. Classical conditioning. Classical conditioning by Ivan Pavlov. Then that is stimulus response reaction. All those associations form. Then uh, Sneha. You know any? No, you were not there, right? Uh, Megna. Open learning. Operant learning, yes. Operant conditioning. Then, Ashish, remember the child uh, who uh, looked at the models and imitated the aggressive behaviors. What learning was that? Huh? Bobo doll. What were all experiments that I remember? I'm asking about the principle, which was the learning theory behind that. How did they learn? Was it through classical conditioning? No. Was it through operant? Not exactly. And what did Paul? What was it? Huh? observational learning that was observational learning okay so observational learning also called social learning <clears throat> that's there 
then classical conditioning open conditioning the concepts of reinforcements punishments everything comes under this learning principles okay all these are considered as learning principles and this is the basis for behavior therapy <clears throat> so obviously if we have learned a faulty behavior you can either unlearn it or you can relearn it if it's a good behavior and you have forgotten it you can relearn it otherwise you can modify that behavior in some other form <clears throat> can you give me any one example where um, you always wanted to change a bad behavior of yours change or stop a bad behavior of yours when we studied the goals of psychology we learned about control right either we have to reduce or we have to stop particular behavior or thought pattern so tell me mahek tell me any one behavior that you always wanted to stop or reduce being short tempered being short tempered okay and what all did you do to uh, reduce it or have you done anything yet um not yet started okay only in the thought process then uh, megna <clears throat> when someone is saying something serious and they misspell some word i yeah. love it greatly so did you do anything to stop that or reduce it yeah i put my hand like this hiding the behavior ha <laughs> ah, anyways let it be so uh, i'll give you an example just a minute i don't know if uh, if you uh, guys remember or i don't know i don't remember if i've shared this to you before, shared with you before it's about a case that uh, one of our teacher shared with us okay uh, it's about a lady uh, who <clears throat> has lost her mother okay have i told this before again just because uh, i have two psychology classes now right so i get confused which case did i uh, share with whom anyways <clears throat> this uh, lady i i don't think it's a mother some close relative some close uh, relative of this person passed away and uh, she was in grief okay so it's normal to uh, be in the spirit mahek is laughing have you heard this before is it the comfort food ah uh, no okay so what happened this um, it is normal to be in grief right it's normal to mourn for the people who have left uh, us so um, after this no even after this normal period of grief this lady continued to be very much uh, low in mood less interested in the activities and frequently crying it was not about depression but it was because of this grief not uh, in the area of depression and uh, so afterwards uh, the husband convinced her and then brought her to therapy okay so what happened this uh, the therapist uh, who was again one of our teachers he asked uh, the husband to set alarms and then uh ask this wife to cry every now and then like there was an interval set so after every interval this husband even if they are sleeping this husband wakes up and uh, calls out to the wife and then uh instructs her to cry suppose if it is uh, 10:30 and the alarm is set for 10:30 then if if the alarm is set for every 3 hours suppose at 10:30 this person will call the wife and then get up get up start crying start crying that what he does huh? and this wife had frequent cries remember that okay every now when then this person would sit and cry then after that uh, again in the next interval the alarm will ring this person will wake up and this uh, he'll call uh, wife and ask her to cry 
so this continued and then uh, again follow up sessions were also there they came for therapy again um, the therapist so these are the goals that we set suppose if they cannot wake up every 3 hours uh, they'll do it for every 5 hours after every 5 hour this uh, routine will continue okay and um, <clears throat> what happens is in the therapy the therapist will uh, see the review how was it done uh, how did it go the long uh, process the whole process will be discussed with the therapist and if the, there is any modifications to be done the therapist will suggest that okay that's what happens and finally what happened is uh, the the alarms were set and then this person is trying to um, call the wife or instruct the wife to cry right so uh, there is something called negative practice negative practice means practicing a behavior that uh, you want to change so that that will get inhibited there is something involved in this too that is called reactive inhibition just because you are doing it repeatedly you stop doing it negative practice and reactive inhibitions uh, are a bit um, old theoretical concepts but i just introduced you just to understand make you understand how behavior therapy works okay and finally uh, what would be the end result this lady would have stopped crying not would have the lady stopped crying she used to wonder what is this guy trying to do with me like uh, if i ask you to sit and cry now can you cry with the whole of your heart no you can cry only when you're sad right when you think from this point then you connect it to that negative event then you come back to this event then you connect to other negative events in your mind then you think of your childhood where you had so many problems and you think of the present situation where you don't have any hope about the future and finally it will be a mess that's what usually happens but uh, if somebody comes and tells you every now and then please cry please sit and cry start crying now you have time to cry now don't waste time you can sit and cry now is it something to do uh, during your leisure time no so that's how it works and um, in psychodynamic therapy we learned about free association uh, the other techniques right dream analysis interpretation confrontation clarification all those things but in behavior therapy we don't have one general set to apply to the uh, apply to the case we have n number of techniques under behavior therapy according to the situation of the client according to the problem of the client and according to the client we decide which therapy or which technique is to be used again i told you negative practice reactive inhibition all those comes under behavior therapy only now have you heard of uh, token economy anyone token economy no somewhere think so okay let it be we'll study that in this chapter then uh, reinforcements obviously you know what do we use reinforcements for to increase a good behavior what do we use punishment for to decrease a bad behavior that has that is also again a form of behavior therapy but we apply that in daily life so now especially with children positive and negative reinforcements and in workplace also you can see promotions or salary increments all those are forms of reinforcements to in, improve the uh, workers or the employees interest in the work or uh, to decrease their absenteeism all those might be the goals so um i'll just introduce you to one thing and then we'll discuss rest in the next class <clears throat> usually in behavior therapies we have something called abc hmm? this is antecedents a for antecedent this is behavior this one is consequences 
Okay. So can you find a relation between these three? Antecedent means? What would be antecedent? Suppose if we take <clears throat> a focus behavior, which is smoking. Okay. Um, <clears throat> peer influence. Suppose I have a friend and I'm, I'm uh, already a chain smoker. I'm asking my friend, I'm pressurizing my friend to smoke. That can be an antecedent. Hmm? Or maybe <clears throat> I am very depressed or I'm very disappointed with my uh, things in life, with happenings in my life. So I want to get a relief from that. What will I do? I'll engage in some addictive behavior. I'll start substance abuse or something. Hmm? It's just an example, okay? And uh, the, what would be the consequence after that? <clears throat> consequence means something that happens after the behavior. After the focus behavior, okay? So antecedent will be something before and the consequence will be something after. Just understand that and keep. Okay, we have to learn about antecedent operations then <clears throat> consequent operations and all in this behavior therapy. Hmm? Uh, we learn that in the next class. If you can, please read up that portion, method of treatment in behavior therapy. Do we have class tomorrow? Okay, anyways, just read when you get time. Take only a few minutes, 10 minutes or so. So in behavior therapy, remember, we apply the learning principles and there are no set of definite techniques to be applied to every client that we meet. According to the purpose, according to the client, according to the situation, according to the problem of the client, we apply a particular technique, whichever therapist selects. Understood? Okay, that's it. We'll wind up there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.